Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new limited series of podcasts by the United Grand Lodge of England on, of course, what else? The celebration of the tercentenary of the publication of the 1723 Constitutions. Now, by way of introduction to this important anniversary, we spoke to Dr. Rick Berman on the Constitutions and their importance, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Now, why on earth, why on earth are we celebrating the Book of Constitutions? Um, how, how can we um, justify that we're calling an event inventing the future? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. Today's Book of Constitutions, which is a rather dull collection of rules and regulations, has very little to do with the original 1723 constitutions. The 1723 constitutions absolutely transformed Freemasonry. It set out enlightenment principles, it advocated aspiration, and it marked a complete break with the old charges that had governed medieval and later stonemasons' lodges. 1723 constitutions really were a product of their time and of their authors' beliefs. They championed enlightenment principles. They advocated religious tolerance, which was totally radical in a world that had been characterised for over two centuries by religious conflict. They advocated constitutional government, the idea of a supreme legislature, not the absolutism of a divinely appointed monarch, but a balance between an elected parliament, a constitutional king or queen, and an independent judiciary. They put forward the idea of meritocracy at a time when birth and wealth and patronage determined success. And they advocated high standards of interpersonal civility, as well as education and science, a world that was interpreted through rational observation rather than religious diktat. And finally, they put forward the idea of personal and societal self-improvement. Now, these values were not only valid in 1723, they remain valid, indeed they're particularly relevant today. 1723 constitutions also provided a rule book for Freemasonry, a structure that was emulated by virtually every other secular sub, club and society in Britain and around the world. And these practices included the election of lodge officers subject to democratic accountability with one member wielding one vote, majority rule and acceptance of that by the minority, orations by elected officials, a national governance structure that was federal in nature, and written constitutions and bylaws. Now, clearly some other organisations had similar characteristics, the Royal Society being one. But what carved Freemasonry out was that it acted as a vector for the transmission of these ideas and principles, not on a limited uh, local scale, but provincially, nationally and internationally. Freemasonry carried these ideas across the world. Freemasonry's overall approach, its ideology, was based really on two things, on meritocracy and egalitarianism among aspirational men. And a prominent historian of the Enlightenment period, Margaret Jacob, has noted that this identity didn't prevent the lodges from being hierarchical and eager for aristocratic patronage, but it did ultimately tilt them in the direction of being schools for government, inculcating principles for a more republican politics, especially, of course, in America. And she made the point that the Lodge provided a, a social atmosphere within which the new ideas of the age, religious tolerance, scientific literacy, and intellect rather than birth, became the criterion of excellence, the criteria of excellence 
and that flourished. Within two decades, Freemasonry had become the largest and most influential of Britain's many clubs and societies, and it would remain so into the 20th century. So let me go back to the beginning. Why is it that we're celebrating the 1723 constitutions and how can we justify the moniker inventing the future? Well, most Freemasons have only a very limited idea of what the craft achieved, what Freemasonry accomplished through the development and proselytization of Enlightenment principles. The tercentenary of the constitutions of the Freemasons is an opportunity to alter that, to take pride in the achievements of Freemasonry as an organisation and to recognise that Freemasons and Freemasonry were at the heart of scientific, philosophical and social change. Well, thank you, Rick. I think everyone will agree that was a fascinating insight and preview uh, as to what we can expect over the course of this limited series of podcasts and, of course, over this tercentenary years we as freemasons come together to celebrate the 1723 constitutions we're very excited to share the story of the constitutions with you and next week we will be delving into some of the personalities of the people behind the constitutions who they were what they were about and how they were connected to the constitutions themselves we hope you've enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to seeing you again next time bye everyone (laughs) 